Uh, okay, January 11th today. All right, so what we're going to do, uh, um, you already have, the, okay, I, all my classes I, I, I post on YouTube, so you can uh, you can go back and re-watch some of that stuff. Uh, there are no posted lecture notes from for yesterday, so the video content is your um, basically notes in the form of the video uh, format. Uh, today you do have already posted the lecture notes uh, and we're going to continue with this. Now, uh, this online thing gives us the advantage of uh, having the, uh, having the, uh, the content uh, during the first two sessions and then we get the extra time. We end up with having some extra time that we can go over some labs, we can go over some, uh, uh, I can answer questions uh, and uh, things like that. All right. So that's the, that would be the advantage of having things online uh, um, as we continue with this. Now, are we going to go back in person after January 17th? I don't know. I'm just going to keep watching the news and, and look for the directions from our management uh, department. Okay. So, uh, uh, yeah. So, yeah, we'll just uh, we'll, we'll see when the when the time comes. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Now, um, when it comes to your schedules, uh, this is uh, this session is for sections two, four, and six. But everyone, welcome. Are there any conflicts uh, from the other sections? Like, uh, like for example, people from sections one, three, and five. Are they able to come today here, like right now? And vice versa, uh, were you the, the guys from uh, the people from 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 sections two and four and six? Were you able to uh, to join uh, yesterday? Okay. So it looks like the uh, yesterday's sections are able to join in today. What about today's sections? Uh, were you able to join yesterday? Okay, good. So there's no conflict of uh, interest. <laughs> there's no scheduling conflict. Okay, good. So uh, we can continue from uh, from yesterday, and uh, uh, well, I just want to point out to you. Let's just see here. Uh, you see, here's our class portal, and if you go into the announcements. Somewhere, one of the, this is a today's lecture announcement, somewhere in the announcements you're going to find our YouTube playlist. If you click on that link, or if you copy and paste into a, your browser, you are going to get our YouTube list. So here is the first uh, um, instruction set for, uh, for the deliverables, how to prepare those. Uh, absolutely, please, you must watch that. All right. Uh, then uh, here's yesterday. Uh, no, that's not yesterday's lecture. That's another uh, lecture as far as um, that's from last year. But this basically gives you the scope of the course. Um, we had that from last year, so I was I just posted that. So it does give you some overview of what we're going to study. When I go over the course plan, this is the course plan from last year. You are going to get this content, not necessarily in the same order. Uh, every year I have to adjust the order of things uh, as far as the, uh, um, just to accommodate the current uh, academic calendar that has to do with holidays and other things. So uh, uh, every year you're going to get the same content uh, with slight differences maybe, um, but uh, not necessarily in the same order. So now when the schedule is still crystallizing, I am uh, finalizing the new course plan, and it's going to be posted soon, and it's going to replace the uh, the last year's uh, course plan that is actually posted in the content section. All right, so I'll just sit tight. Um, yeah. Now, also, what you can see here, uh, this is yesterday's lecture. Uh, go ahead and watch that. If somebody was not able to join in yesterday, watch that. This is the background of. Um, this is the. the the in background information that you will need to understand uh, today's uh, uh, today's class, okay? Uh, or you can just watch today's class and be with me here, and then you can just go back and then just go a little bit uh, back for today's uh, when this thing is posted, um, and it's going to make more sense. Um, all the lectures I post post on the YouTube, as I said, 
so uh, you can revisit some content and if you uh, if you don't understand something uh, you can just go back and rewatch it again and if still if you're still having some uh, problems with uh, with something by all means send me an email all right okay so today we're going to and this uh, this uh, youtube playlist is going to uh, keep populating as we go uh, uh what you're going to find here is going to find all the lectures that we've done we have done up to date and you're going to see the lab instructional uh, sessions as well which you will absolutely have to watch in order to uh, to perform your labs um, same like last time we have the tools and safety um, this is uh, this is it's continuing from 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 last term as far as the structure of things with me uh, we are going to do two labs per session um, but you absolutely must watch the instructional videos uh, that will be posted right here on this YouTube list uh, in order to be comfortable with doing the labs or to be able to do labs, period. Right? Um, so that's, uh, that's the structure of this course. Okay, so uh, continuing from yesterday, uh, where is my session here? Um, view... How do I get in the full view? I think it's out of four. So full screen, control L. There we go. Uh, control L. All right. So that gives us the uh, so uh, public ad, uh, PA systems part one. And um, next time we're going to see each other, we're going to continue with the second part of it. Uh, you know what? I do like in, in, in some ways, I do like the online delivery uh, system because uh, in this case, it just works to our, advent uh, our advantage um, because we end up with some extra time that we can utilize uh, uh, in, so I can give you the proper content in the right, uh, um, well, the proper content. Okay? Because sometimes uh, I feel like I don't have enough time to give you all that I think that you need to know. All right, so let's continue with this here. Uh, the labs will be by okay uh, here's a question here yes the labs will be bi-weekly and you are going to get a schedule um, um, as soon as I know that for sure the sections are filled completely and that's going to, not going to change okay I just want to do it once and uh, by the end of this week you will know your schedule right so you do uh, everyone if you are uh, just, just, just take a look at yourself, and, uh, and and you're going to attend the lab every two weeks. And in every lab session, you're going to perform two labs. And I adjust the lab timing and the lab types because some of the labs take longer, some of the labs uh, take not as long. So if the if there's a longer lab, like for example, uh, there's a 25 pair termination um, lab. Uh, that is going to take just one lab for that session. But if there are some shorter ones, we can combine them. Uh, and and it, it has worked um, in the previous years. It actually works pretty good. All right. Uh, is my schedule wrong? Uh, see, I don't know. If there's any conflicts, uh, then uh, then maybe. But, uh, but your schedule, my first guess is that no, it's not wrong you are going to have those designated days for your for those labs you're just going to go every second week okay. uh, all right and uh, for the lectures do we have it on monday instead of uh, no no the, the lectures are as scheduled um, but uh, because of the online uh, system we're able to um, sort of have end up with some extra time if we go back in person, full time in person, then uh, we're we're just going to uh, uh, this lecture would be in class and it would be a repeat of what I did on Monday, uh, yesterday. Uh, are we always going to need to watch Monday lectures? Well, uh, here's the thing: uh, all this content that I'm going to populate uh, with the YouTube playlist, uh, basically, you need to see all of that. Right? And some of them are going to be longer, some of them are going to be shorter, some of the other things. All right. uh, okay, so let's, uh, if, 
if you have some more questions, by all means. Uh, oh, is there a hand? Who? No. Huh. Who rose hand? Right. Oh. Maybe nobody. Oh, I'm still working out those icons here on this new Zoom version. All right. PA systems, uh, public address. Let's see how many people we have. 34 people here today. And it's just, I'm just going to go over. Yeah, we have a pretty good class. All right, cool. Let's start with this, uh, uh, with this show here. Okay, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I just, uh, I see the, the hand that we, let me just. Yeah. I don't know, I see a hand being raised, but yeah, thank you, Timothy. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, if, uh, if you have more questions, just, just shoot all the, all the chat lines. I'm just trying to figure out how this thing works still. Uh, okay, cool. PA systems. PA stands for public address. All right. Description. An audio system consisting of audio sources, amplification equipment, output, transducers such as loudspeaker. What is a transducer? A transducer is a device that will convert one form of energy into another. Like, for example, a microphone. A microphone is going to sense uh, air vibrations in terms of sound and it is going to convert that into electrical signal it's a transducer um, antenna um, antenna it could go both ways it could transmit or it could receive if it transmits it's going to receive electrical signals and it's going to convert that into electromagnetic waves Excuse me. And the other ways, uh, if it's a receiver antenna, it's going to sense, um, it's going to react to the presence of the electromagnetic waves, and it's going to convert that into a um, into the electrical signal. Uh, a loudspeaker. Loudspeaker is basically another name of a speaker. So if I say loudspeaker, or if you see that in light, in literature, it's the basically the device that it has a cone membrane and you know, circular form usually, and it basically transmits sound. So a loudspeaker, usually it is an output device or a transducer, and it's going to receive electric signals, and it's going to convert uh, that into sound waves. Right? So transducer is a device that transduces or converts uh, one form of energy onto another right the purpose of the pa systems is to process amplify and distribute audio signals over a large area simple enough okay All right this is the um, kind of a concept of any kind of a communication system in our case, it would be a PA system or the public address. Now, public address systems or PA systems, uh, they could. You know, the, the main purpose is to deliver audio over uh, over a large area or or, or um, number of receivers, as far as maybe people listening. Um, and there are different kinds, and some some of them are quite different one from another. And we're going to analyze some of those cases here, right? So uh, this, is the, um, uh, this is the concept of any sort of uh, communication system, right? In our case, PA system. So in the beginning, we're going to have input transducer, uh, which we just talked about. Uh, and the examples of that would be a Microsoft, sorry, microphone, <laughs> would be a, a MP3 player, guitar, piano, or any kind of a, a well, instrument, all right, uh, that would have, uh, that would be, it's like, for example, guitar. It has, guitar has strings, and it has something that's called a pickup, and it's an electronic sensor, uh, almost like a microphone. Um, it works in a similar way. And then uh, uh, it converts those sounds uh, that, uh, that are produced by the strings into electric signals, okay? Uh, so, input transducer. Then there's a transmitter. Transmitter. 
input signal processing all right uh, so uh, uh, this would be something like a preamplifier or a mixing console or maybe even a telephone system right? so first we get the signal processed delivered into a transmitter the transmitter packages it up and transmits over a link link what would be a link it could be a piece of wire right? it could be a cable uh, uh, so we distinguish, uh, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit, all right, so we can see things better. Uh, so the link would be, we distinguish uh, the links as such, copper, fiber, wireless. Right? So copper would be hmm, copper cables. Uh, yes, they could be aluminum cables as well, but uh, for the simplicity purpose, usually you would say copper. Fiber, fiber optics, optical fiber, they transmit light. Um, and uh, wireless link, wireless link, most of the time it will be air, right? Could you transmit wirelessly underwater? Yes, sure. But uh, wireless, uh, so, so it's a, uh, yeah, so we have three things, copper, fiber, wireless, and the form of the signal could be analog or it could be digital. Then we go on to uh, a receiver. I have a question here. Uh, how hard would it be to add uh, pre-outs to an integrated amplifier? Or preamps? Did you mean preamps? To bypass the internal power amp section. Uh, you know what? Uh, why don't you send me an email? because i need some i need some more information as to what you're asking okay uh i i think you have some kind of a specific situation uh so uh, yeah i will be happy to help you with that um but send me an email uh, or even if you want one-on-one -on -one session we can uh, we can talk about it cool or um during the lab if you have it with me uh all right so uh then the the uh, signal travels through the link and it is received by a receiver in our case it would be an audio amplifier most most of the time uh receiver could be uh, okay so the systems could have could, could be one big system but it also can have sub systems nothing to do with the subwoofer but uh, sub systems as as far as the uh, systems a bunch of smaller systems that have the same characteristics as the big one and then uh, so it's, it's more like building blocks right so uh, uh let me give you an example a wireless microphone right a wireless microphone has a usually will be a well, lapel mic or, uh, or or one that you wear by your chin uh, like a head form of a headset and it does have a wireless transmitter called a belt pack usually a popular name for that then it does have a separate box that is a receiver so and that could be the part of the big system that consists of those uh, things that i'm showing you here so in that big system there could be a mini system that consists of the same uses the same principles a transducer uh, transmitter link so the, the the wireless mic would use the transducer as a microphone there will be a processor with the belt pack and then uh, it sends wireless link into its receiver and that supplies the signal to a bigger system that would also be um, a receiver like a mixing console and so on all right but for the most part uh, just to make things to, to get things simple it usually is a audio amplifier right and then of course we had the input transducer and at the end we're trying to make some use out of this it can make sense because why are we doing this there's some purpose of it so we do have output transducer and you see here it's loudspeakers. So usually it will be a loudspeaker. Right? Now also in uh, in PA systems, uh, there's a popular thing that is called uh, hearing impaired, uh, which would be uh, for for audience that uh, maybe is hard of hearing. Usually in uh, something that's called a church audio systems, uh, when the congregation. Uh, consists of younger and older people as we age our hearing goes down a little bit so there are po very popular systems as far as hearing impaired 
so the loudspeaker would not be considered in the hearing impaired system. Uh, it well, would be headphones, uh, for example, right? or, a, or a processor that, uh, that is interfaced with the hearing impaired. Um, the technology keeps going further and further when, with that. So there could be two parallel systems. One, uh, the main system with the loudspeakers, and uh, would be also paralleled with the hearing impaired system. Very, very popular uh, thing to install uh, when you go into church audio systems. Or sometimes it's called house of worship, a technical name for it. All right. Now, the uses of the PA systems. Where do we use PA systems? Well, use them in schools, retail stores, the announcements, uh, so and so. You know, can we get some more people to cash register somewhere? So, uh, so, PA system is being used. Interface maybe with the um, telephone systems or the intercom system, right? Uh, churches or house of, house of worship, house of worship, uh, that's uh, the technical name for it, uh, or sometimes it's called church, interchangeable names. Okay, um, then a stage. Now, stage could be, a, that could be different stage. It could be a theater stage, which is different from the regular uh, good old rock and roll type of a stage. Okay. Uh, theater, there we go. Hearing impaired, meeting rooms, public events, sports events, shopping malls, and you know what? I'm pretty sure if I think hard enough, uh, I could probably come up with 20 more uses for that. But you get the idea. Yeah. PA system, public address. These will be the essential parts. All right, let's get some definitions out of the way here. Uh, first, uh, first things first. I'm just going to. Um, there's a note that I wrote. Here's a little note that I wrote. In the written installation contracts, the language might differ. <clears throat> this is when you get to go out there and if you get yourself a job in this kind of field, um, it's always really good idea to pretty much read everything when it comes to contracts. Right? I'm just going to give you a little uh, note based on my experience in the field. Uh, in written installations, contracts uh, in written installation contracts, the language might differ. Always confirm the definitions for every contract. So if you're not sure, or if you see some common, um, common not mistakes, but, but differences that uh, people call things in a different name, if it matters, then always call the contractor and confirm. So here's an example. The sound system used to amplify a rock or rock and roll concert is commonly called the PA system. Originally, or, or simply uh, PA. Right? While technically it could be called a sound reinforcement. Right? So uh, some engineers, when they write the contracts, uh, they might call that sound reinforcement. But then again, when you talk about sound reinforcement, it could be a different, uh, it could be a different idea. For example, in conference rooms, a sound reinforcement is a, is a specific way of reinforcing the sound. Uh, basically, it involves hanging the microphones uh, overhead just to cover the area where people speak. All right? And then that signal goes into some system that's usually somewhere in some of the side closets and it's getting processed and it's being reinforced or slightly amplified or amplified enough so uh, the people, other people who participate, they can hear the sound better because it could be a larger room. So sometimes it involves ceiling speakers, overhead speakers, or sometimes it involves speakers that are installed in the consoles that uh, people say, a very popular thing in conference room. Uh, now the sound reinforcement as far as the the difference between this type of sound reinforcement um, and the, I would say, a rock concert is that in a rock concert, you are going to hear the sound coming and pumping through the speakers, and you're going to hear it. Sometimes you're going to feel it. Right um, now, when it comes to sound reinforcement, when it comes uh, when we install this in things like conference rooms, 
uh, the sound reinforcement is almost unnoticeable because you don't see the microphone uh, that somebody's wearing or somebody's holding or whatever. Um, but uh, you're going to have that sound reinforced. It's going to be picked up by the overhead microphones, and those are quite often will be like hidden, not exposed much. And the speakers could be also not very obvious. Uh, so the sound system works. The sound is reinforced. The idea is that the people who are receiving the speech or the whatever the, the yeah, speech uh, are comfortable with understanding what somebody is talking. And quite often, if it's properly set up, you don't even know that the sound system exists. So it's a sound reinforcement. You actually think that all the sound you're hearing is from the person's mouth. While, while it's actually reinforced and, 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 and pumped through the speakers. And you notice that the sound system is actually installed when somebody pulls the plug and shuts this thing down, and, oh, everything becomes quieter. So, uh, uh, so that will be sound reinforcement used in conference rooms. Uh, uh, but technically, any kind of a PA system is considered as sound reinforcement. So always confirm the language that... Uh, um, uh, that uh, that's being used in contracts. Now I can see uh, two hands raised, but for some reason, for some reason I can see, but I don't know who rose the hands. Oh, well, no, no, I still I don't. Okay, well, is there does somebody has a question? Yeah, I had a question. Okay. Um, just at the start, there a few of us are a little confused. Uh, just on our schedule, we don't have you for Monday, so mm -hmm. we just want to uh, make sure if we have to rewatch your other class. If we're uh, for this that. week, uh, for this week, yes. And uh, so basically, what I say, anything that is posted on YouTube uh, is for you to watch. Okay, because uh, sometimes I'm going to mention mention something during one class and not men mention in the other. Uh, yeah, the reason why I have the YouTube list is just so you get as much as possible and uh, that we don't miss anything. So whatever is on the YouTube list, just watch it. Um, and some of them are going to be shorter uh, lessons. If we go back in person, it things are the, 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 it's going to be a different ball game. Okay. Okay. Thanks. It's oh, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So sound reinforcement: any system which amplifies one or more source for a live audience. Okay. Yeah, grab the right mouse. Public address, sound enhancement, or hearing impaired. Public address, sound reinforcement. So you see here, sound enhancement. Meeting rooms quite often is called a sound reinforcement. So just uh, you know, uh, just so you know that some people will think of some, uh, will say one thing and mean another, just because they're used to that type of a lingo uh, whenever they are dealing with. Uh, things. So uh, as you go along, you'll be able to distinguish the, the stuff. But uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, so public address, public announcements, background music, uh, good old rock and roll, stage, theater, church, arena. Right? Then sound enhancements, meeting rooms, conference rooms, conference environment, and hearing impaired audio enhancement uh, for the hearing impaired uh, system. Here, okay. Now as far as theater. Quite often, uh, sound enhancement is being used in theater. If you ever um, get hired in, in the theater environment, um, uh, as far as sound, quite often you're going to notice uh, that the people are not wearing wireless mics. Right? Sometimes they're going to wear wireless mics, and sometimes the actors are going to refuse wearing, wearing the wireless mics because they will say, I'm an actor, I should be able to project, and if you offer it, a wireless mic it's almost like a like a slap in the face you know that i'm not a professional enough what do you think um so uh you know, it depends on who who you talk to all right uh so sometimes uh i think the, the whenever i did with dealt with theater i used the sound enhancement uh that would be almost uh used as the conference room here right? So basically, you think that the, the sound, all the sound you're getting comes from the person's mouth, and you know that the system exists once somebody turns it off because everything becomes quieter. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> so that's uh, just basically scratching the surface of what the PA systems are about. Uh, right now, this is uh, constant voltage distributed system. 
we distinguish two of those, 25 volt system and 70 volt system. Uh, well, I'm not going to get much into what exactly happens when it's 25 volts or 70 volts. Constant voltage is basically the voltage in the line, the main line right here, is constant as throughout the system when the system is set to a specific volume. When the system is at the full power, if it's a 70 volt system, then this line is going to have 70 volt RMS. 70 volt. If the volume of the main amplifier is turned down, of course it's going to be less. Right? But it's going to be constant through all the speakers that the volume. So the power that, uh, that, uh, that is being delivered to each individual speaker is going to be controlled by the taps on the individual step-down transformer and the current is going to be controlled. Uh, okay, question here. Yeah, okay. I'll, uh, Ben, send me an email, okay, if you could, please, uh, so we, I could uh, I could spend, uh, I could give you appropriate amount of time. All right. uh, lab one is at home, completed, uh, yes, no, we don't, don't bring, you submit that on the, uh, the lab one, you submit um, into the submission box, which is already set up, and I'll show that to you, okay. All right, so uh, remember when we talked about the transformers yesterday, uh, how they convey power, and again, transformers, what do they transform? They transform voltage, they transform current, and then transform impedance. What do they convey or pass through is the power. And transformers are so efficient that pretty much almost 100% efficiency, uh, very high 90s, uh, maybe 98%, 99% efficiency uh, that, uh, that the transformers have, okay, as far as conveying power from the primary winding to the secondary winding. Okay. Does it mean that the power is always there? No, it's, that means that the, the, the power, that the transformer is capable of delivering the power that is being uh, inserted into the primary windings. Okay. Uh, so um, let's analyze this uh, this thing here. Here is the, something that's called the step up transformer. So this is from the amplifier, and now the step up transformers. Some PA amplifiers have it built in, and you have the terminals at the back that say seventy volt. That means it's this kind of an output. They will also have maybe 8 ohm or 4 ohm. So depending on which output you want to use, you're going to utilize the proper output for whatever the system you have that you're connecting to that amplifier. If you're connecting the distributed audio with speakers, uh, the, the, with the transformers, you're going to connect it to the 70 volt. Or sometimes they're going to say, uh, it's going to say 25 volt. There are two types, 25 volt and 70 volt systems. Uh, they work exactly the same. Uh, so uh, now, over here, now if you don't have it built in, yes, you can use a regular PA amplifier without built in. So you would usually have 8 ohm output or 4 ohm output, sometimes 16 output, but not very common. And you can buy external uh, step up transformer, audio transformer. Of course, it has to be, it's a big and heavy transformer, I don't know, because it has to handle a lot of power. Um, and you connect that to the low impedance, Z stands for impedance, which would be like 8 ohms. And then it transfers the impedance, transforms the impedance into high impedance, which will be like 1,000 ohms or 1,500 ohms, things like that. Okay? And then you are able to run that line all the way to the end, if it's a hallway. And you're going to use the step-down transformers that are connected with the speakers so the speakers come uh, well you're going to see pictures as we go along and you just keep tapping in keep tapping in keep tapping in in parallel so this way you can keep adding or distribute or or, or, or or subtracting speakers from the whole system without affecting anything else 
if the sound system works certain way and it's got a certain volume, you tap in with another speaker, it's not going to affect everything else. As far as balance, uh, if you load it too much, then yes, uh, then it's going to af affect the whole thing. But the, the whole, as far as the audio balance between, uh, between all, everything else, uh, and uh, if it's just uh, one speaker, you're not going to notice any difference whatsoever with all the other speakers. It's important. When you add or subtract speakers in the distributed audio system, you take this away or you add one more it's not going to it is not going to affect all the other speakers same if you have a volume control if you adjust the volume of one speaker we'll talk about that it is not going to affect any other speakers also uh, the transformers do have some that's called taps we'll talk about that the taps Basically, it's are using different, utilizing the primary winding of the step down transformer at a different tap. What does it mean? You're grabbing the, 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 the winding uh, has common wire coming out of the winding, and then there are wires ins inserted and brought out at any point of maybe after 200 wounds, after 400 wounds, after 500 wounds or something like that, okay? So then these are called taps and by choosing the appropriate tap, you are telling this, this whole station of how much power to draw from the whole system. If you select different taps on this step down transformer, it is not going to affect anything else. That's the beauty of this whole uh, distributed audio system. So this is the step up transformer because it connects to the low impedance such as 8 ohms and on the other side it does have high impedance such as 1000 ohms or more and this is a step down transformer because it on the primary winding it, 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 it has high impedance like 1000 ohms or so and on the secondary winding it will be accommodating the low impedance like an 8 ohm speaker here. So step up and step down for each individual speaker. Main audio bus, it's in the bus form. Uh, typically 18 gauge or 14 gauge unshielded two conductor wire, stranded speaker wire. They'll be the most common ones, but those systems are so forgiving that uh, uh, even if you, if you connect it through a barbed wire, it's going to work. Don't do that. All right, constant voltage uh, speakers. So this is just a different view on things. Uh, it's going from the power amp, low impedance, 8 ohms. Again, same thing here. That's a step up transformer. This is a step down transformer. Here's a speaker. And it's the, 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 the main bus it does have high impedance because it's connected to the high impedance part of the step up transformer. Why unshielded? Um, well, you can use shielded, but uh, usually in the industry, it all comes down to money. Right? So if you can, anything that you can do cheaper or less expensive, you will do it. Right? And uh, so unshielded is because we can. Right? If you want to use shielded, sure, you can. Uh, now, sometimes it's going to be recommended that you use shielded because maybe it's going to affect some other equipment, sensitive equipment that's in the ceiling. That we can, you know, so sometimes it's required to have shielded. And it's going to be in a contract. Right? Uh, I processed unshielded as unsheathed. Um, well, sheathing is um, it's like insulation part of insulation or some sort of a dielectric material that goes between the jacket and the wires that are inside there and the shield is a metallic form a metallic screen that prevents the electromagnetic um, field to escape and affecting other things from the cable right now, here is the tapping. Okay, so here's the signal 
con you know, conditioning circuits. <laughs> so it will be uh, whatever else is supplying the signal to the power amplifier. And here is the step up transformer. <clears throat> Now the transformers have taps. See the idea of taps? Here's the common terminal of the primary winding of the step down transformer. And you can uh, tap in a different way that you're going to draw a little bit more or less power uh, from the transform from the main line. Okay? If you so the taps are going to have watts. So here's a 1 watt, 2 watts, 5 watts, 10 watts. What does that mean? That means that this speaker station is going to draw 1 watt from the main line if the main line is at the full volume. Which means it's going to sound like a little bit quieter than 2 watts. Or 5 watts is going to sound louder. 10 watts is going to sound even louder. Right. Now, if you change those tops in the speaker stations, uh, you are not going to affect any other speaker stations. That's the beauty of that. Now, I, I have here a couple of loudspeakers or speakers. Now, the dot is basically the beginning of the uh, winding. It is important that if you have a bunch of speakers or loudspeakers in the same area, that they are in phase which means the plus goes to plus, minus goes to minus, the same way for all the speakers. If you reverse the polarity on one of the speakers, it, it, is something going to happen? Like, is it going to blow up or catch fire? No. Is it going to bring the system down? No. But the sound, is, the sound comes out of the membrane, so it just vibrates a certain way. So it's a good idea that all the speakers vibrate the membranes the same way. Because if you reverse the polarity in one of them, they're going to vibrate this way, in the opposite way. And there could be some sound cancellations happening, or it's going to sound kind of weird if the speakers are out of phase. Right? So that's why we try to uh, we just have to make sure that everything is in phase. Right? Also, I have a couple of loudspeakers here. And there's a horn speaker or sometimes it's called paging horn the loudspeakers just the regular speakers with the round membrane um, they're good for closed rooms uh, small size like um, I don't know could be a fast food place ceiling speakers uh, school hallways uh, things like that but there's the proximity of that is uh, between the speakers and the listener is not that far uh, and if you want to just carpet cover the whole area so this this be the, the the loudspeakers are the best for that now if it's a large production hall and you need a little bit more oomph or more cut through to the sound you uh would be better off you use something that's called paging horn mm -hmm. Paging horns, they do have low bandwidth, mostly mid-highs, so you're not going to be able to get too much bass out of that. But when it comes to announcements, you're not looking for the bass, you're looking for the sound intelligibility. You're going to try to uh, uh, install a system that whatever is being said is understood by, it's usually announcements, and you don't need the quality sound, it's not hi-fi. Uh, you're not going to listen to some sort of a symphony orchestra to that and you're going to delight yourself with all this sound uh, that's coming out of it. It's made for a certain purpose, making announcements. Uh, so uh, also a general rule when it comes to that, the further you stand from that, of course, within, within the reason, the better it sounds. When it comes to paging horns, how are we doing with time? 40, 10, 48, okay, we keep going. Right, constant voltage distributed audio system. This is a typical amplifier. It has a couple of inputs, a few inputs here. Um, maybe an output. Here's phones, so headphones. Uh, microphone one, microphone two. That's one CD in. You know, so that's a 
uh, these are some that's called quarter inch jacks we'll talk about that later on as we deal with the telephone systems as well and there's an one eighth inch one eighth of an inch jack um, that comes from the cd uh, cd player right? and the other systems they would uh, uh, they would uh, call it uh, tape right but tape is not used anymore so yeah cd or uh, some of them will be a um, uh, mp3 player or something like that same thing okay? same kind of a signal so here are the volume controls for that so you can balance the modes and there's a bit of a bass mid and highs and here's the master volume okay? so nothing uh, and there's a bit of a view indicator of the sound levels that uh, that uh... now here's the back of that see that depending on what kind of speakers you're going to uh, connect to this here's the common so common says for the the, the, the common wire or the black wire, for example, you're going to connect it to the common. Now, depending on what kind of speakers you have, 4 ohms, you can connect 4 ohm speaker. 8 ohms, you can connect 8 ohm speaker. 16 ohms, and here is the 70 volt. So you just have to know why do we need to know this? Well, there's some concept that's called, uh, I mentioned that yesterday, maximum power transfer. The 4 ohms, 8 ohms, and 16 ohms is an impedance. In order for the maximum power transfer to take place, which whatever is put in is being utilized at the most efficient way, you need to match the impedances. If, it's a, if the output of the amplifier is 4 ohms, you need a 4 ohm speaker for the, all the power to get there. If you mismatch the impedances, you're not going to get as much power transferred and the rest of it that's not getting to the speaker is going to dissipate in heat. Usually it's going to heat up the amplifier. Okay. Um, so, uh, so that's as far now the 70 volt system. Uh, it's basically what we talked about, the distributed audio that we, ta we talked about. And here's some other uh, inputs. Uh, auxiliary, phono or mix or a bus. Uh, so that would be probably... Uh, uh light well i will talk about the line levels and microphone levels later on <clears throat> uh here is a typical here's a typical distributed audio speaker so you see here's the loudspeaker usually like eight inch that's a very common size and here's the step down transformer so you see permanently the 8 ohm part the low impedance is mounted to the transformer and you have different wires so one of them is going to be common and the other one is going to be taps so you go depending on how loud you want the speaker to be you connect the common and one of the taps to the main line here is a volume control we're going to use that in our next lab the volume control let's see do i have the back side of it no i don't the volume control has steps and it's not a smooth transition with this type of volume control it's click 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 on the other side is a transformer with different taps so again just as if you were connecting different taps but once you connect those it's a permanent permanent mount permanent connection but if you want to control that it's just like having another transformer like that with different tabs that you're going to send the so much power into that speaker by doing the clicks all right now you might hear something that's called an l pad um, when it comes to speakers um, you might want to research what l pad is but i'm going to tell you something like that stay away from l pads it's a bad idea okay they can cause fire um that's what i'm going to say and here's the typical um 70 volt paging horn now some of the paging horns they come in different configurations they could be configured as 8 ohms or 16 ohms or 70 volts so if you order those make sure you order the right thing for whatever you're going to use all right here's a typical um transformer you see here's a they, they, they can come in this uh, configuration where you have uh, the windings primary and secondary windings it's an audio transformer 
and you have those five watts orange 2.5 watts yellow 1.25 watts which you consider be one watt right would be considered one watt and so on uh, quarter watt or you know typically if it's a classroom speaker for the school PA systems you would tap the speakers as a quarter watt tap and you would tap the hallway speakers at one watt and you get the proper balance okay? uh, so there are different color wires so they come in, in this kind of configuration and the common of course it's going to it says it's black right? um, Now here's the other side of that, better view. Black is common, red 10 watts. You only connect the common and one of the tabs to the main audio line. And the other side is going to be just two wires and it's going to be connected to the eight ohms would be the low impedance. And this is a high impedance part of it. So you see, it's a primary because it's a step down transformer. You're stepping down the impedance. And this one says 70 volt line transformer. Um, sometimes you get 25 volt transformer. Sometimes you get in configuration of both. And they're going to be uh, explanations of if you're using 70 volt, then use these colors for this wattage. And if you're using 70 volt or 25, different, then use different. So, uh, so uh, sometimes they're labeled as such. Okay. Sometimes instead of the wires, you just have the spade connectors much cleaner right because you only connect two to the main and the other ones you just have to they just, you have to make sure that they don't touch anything else so you have to cut them off and blind them in certain sort of way sometimes people use electrical tape and sometimes people use the uh, wire connectors just to blind them uh, now it's the same thing except instead of having wires coming out you just have those tabs and you just use spade connectors to slide on and connect and slide on and connect. So here's the common. See, the C stands for common. So it'll be one. And if you want to tap this speaker at one watt, you use this tap here. It's closest to one watt, which would be 1.25 watts to be exactly in this type of transformer. So you just use common and that, and you have the speaker tapped at one watt. And the other side is going to have just two wires to tap to connect into the eight ohm speaker section. That's be the, this is the step down transformer. Right. Volume control. You see, here's the other side of the volume control. Now, I know uh, we're coming to close to the one hour here, so I'm going to continue. If you can stay, you're welcome to. If not, uh, you're going to be able to just, uh, I'll put this thing on YouTube and you'll be able to watch the, uh, the, 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 other, the other end of that. Okay. Uh, continue, continue watching with, uh, on, on YouTube. All right. So here's the volume control. If you want to connect the speaker through a volume control, and this is going to be our lab, right? we're going to have one main wire going through the middle of our countertop. And instead of connecting from the main line straight to the speaker, we are going to connect to a volume control first, to the input of the volume control, which will be the primary windings of this transformer right here. And we're going to grab the sound out of the secondary winding of the transformers, so the transformer. And this control here, as you turn, you're selecting different, different taps on that transformer, but it's just basically a convenient way of adjusting the volume if you want to have it, you know, a volume control on the wall. Usually an office setup, because you could have a bunch of ceiling speakers going through the hallway and from the same line you could have one uh, tap off that main line connection parallel connection to the main line going to somebody's office and somebody in that office can actually adjust the volume of the speaker in their personal office yeah, so that's if you want to use the volume controls when it comes to the 70 volt all right one thing i'm going to point out that these transformers can be bulky so if you want to use bag boxes uh, make sure you use the deeper ones so you can fit things in. Okay. Uh, speaker station. All right. Just another analysis. What things look like. You see here, this is the low, low impedance side connected straight and it's permanently soldered. All right. So here's this thing. Eh? And now here you have the other wires 
the tabs. One is common, which goes to one side of the line, the main line, and you choose which one you want to tap in, and the other ones are not used in order to uh, tap the speaker at a certain volume. What does it say here? Uh, low, low impedance terminals, low impedance 8 ohms connected to the 8 ohm loudspeaker terminals, right here. Right? Uh, <clears throat> that's the step down audio transformer. The speaker station is connected to the main line through the step down transformer. The amplifier is connected to the main line through the step up transformer. So this is the step down transformer, and this will be the high impedance terminals, uh, high impedance in the range of you know thousands, uh, thousand, fifteen hundred, you know, something like that, uh, connected to the main speaker cable okay? uh, in a bus-like configuration. Bus is basically one main line, like a river, and everything is tapping into that main river. Uh, the main speaker line line runs from the seventy volt output of the PA amplifier, all the speaker stations connect to that line in parallel. Yeah, that's the beauty of the distributed audio. Uh, now, there's something, you know, uh, there's a give and take. Um, the, the advantage of that is that you do have the possibility of connecting things in a simple way. Simplicity of installation and service and reliability of the system. Because uh, if one speaker burns out, doesn't work, it's not affecting any other speakers. Right? Uh, the, if you can call it disadvantage of that, is that it's not a high quality sound, right? So it's not a high fi high definition sound system. It's usually it's mainly used, uh, mostly used for uh, background music in the malls or in the elevators, hallways, uh, and uh, for doing the announcements. All right, when it comes to installing those speakers, uh, what did I write here? In commercial environment, most of the ceiling stations are installed within the drop ceiling tiles. These are the drop ceiling tiles. Here's the true ceiling above. Yeah. And here's a frame on which the ceiling tiles from soft material are being laid, yeah. installed. Uh, I have seen people just cutting out the round opening and installing the speaker right onto the soft ceiling tile. Don't do that. It's a soft thing. It's going to sag down and it's going to fall out of it. There are frames. Like this is a this is a pot light here, but the speakers also have frames that rest on the main ceiling frame and then the ceiling tile is being put in. And this is an example of one of the ceiling uh, speakers. So here's the mounting frame that rests on the railing or on the, on the main uh, ceiling frame, not affecting any of that soft material. Uh, here's the speaker station, and here's the back box that's being installed. Now, most of the time you're going to, the code is going to, or the contract is going to request that you install the back boxes. The speakers do sound better without the back boxes because you get a little bit more naturally occurring bass because this, the, the, sound system, the sound is not being blocked on the other side and the true ceiling space sometimes acts like a resonating box. But quite often you are not going to be able to install that without the back box because of the local code regulations. And that's the end of, uh, of this class here. Would there be any questions uh, as far as uh, what we talked about? How many people we have? We have still have 20 people here. If there are no questions, let me just uh, kind of go back on the chat lines here to see if I missed anything. Uh, so no in-person lab, no in-person lab this week. Okay. You have the instructions. Let's see here if I have it. Um, 
uh, here is our class portal, right? Go to the content, right? Here are labs. Let me see. Let me make sure. Let me, uh, I'm gonna make myself look like a student here. Okay, so here's content, labs, student items, lecture notes. You have that. Whatever the PowerPoint presentation I have right now, it's there. You can download and keep it. Labs. Here's lab one. If you click on it, it is the instructions of how to do the deliverables. It's going to take a few seconds for this thing to arrive. Yeah, there we go. You can download that too. Right? Also, what do you have? Let's going to go back. Labs. Oh, under the labs, you say blank work orders. Here's a work order one, work order two, or the uh, for coaxial cable. Most of the labs are going to utilize the work order one, just the coaxial cable lab that we're going to perform sometime in the future uses that one. Make sure you bring the proper one for the coaxial cable. And here's a readme file explaining all that I just said. Right here, I'm gonna go back. Here's the work order, print a bunch of them. And keep them in your folder so you can use them as i said we're going to perform two labs per session which means you need to bring two work orders in order for for each lab okay. so this is the main one just print it have it okay. and here is the uh, okay uh and here's the coaxial cable one it's slightly different just clicked on it. It's going to take a couple seconds to to uh, appear. All right, so it's a bit different. Okay, so uh, I sent an email to you about uh, lab one that I'm tr in trouble with. I'll look. I'll check. I'll check that email. You must have sent it just like recently. Uh, all right. Now, uh, what do we have here? Where did you post the YouTube link? Uh, in the announcements. Yes. So if you have, if you go into the main uh, class portal. And it's in the announcement. If you keep scrolling down, those are going to change all the time. But that is going to stay. It says our YouTube link. If you click on it, it's going to take you right to our playlist. Or if you type this here in YouTube, uh, you're going to see that as well. Okay. If it doesn't work, copy and paste it into your browser. Here's the link. Okay. Cool. All right, and by all means, if you have any more questions, uh, you're not sure about something, we're just starting off with this course, uh, send me an email and I will, uh, I'll answer it. Okay. So that's good. That's, that's it for, uh, for today. And I will talk to you and I will see you when I see you. Thank you.